Hey everyone! Sorry, I know I'm a couple minutes late, but uh, you guys will just have to excuse me on that one because, as you can see, I have a um, a new little setup. Right? This is. Let me introduce you to the industrial part of my vinyl shop. So what you guys get to see on a normal basis is the pre part that's in the uh, the actual store, right? but because I wanted to show you guys using my heat press. And as you can see, this heat press is not one that you want to try to tote around. So um, this is a 16 by 24. And let me tell you about this thing. So it, it is a really good size. I don't use it as much as I do my 15 by 15 because it does have some drawbacks. Um, it puts out a lot of heat, but for projects like today, this is absolutely an amazing size. So if you're ever on the fence about getting a bigger heat press, uh, what I, now I saved up for this heat press. It was, I don't know, it was still under $500, but to get this size of a heat press for that, I was really, really excited. So let me show you why. Because this is what we're dealing with today. So if you have, uh, well, let me see if you can see it. So this is a big old doormat. So these doormats come from Home Depot. They're like 13 bucks. And I have done quite a few of them. I don't know if I've posted any of them before or not, but they are really um, sturdy and they have held up really, really well. So um, if I get a chance, I'll show you the one that I've had by the front door, which was my first one. And it has been out there. Well, I mean, it has pumpkins on it. So it's been since at least last fall and it's the vinyl store. So it gets a decent amount of traffic in and out. So, you know, it, it's really held up really good. So this um, lucked out, this is polyester. So you can sublimate straight on here. We don't have to treat it with anything. And the back is this nice rubbery. Um, so it's, it's protected. Does that make sense? Like it's not gonna fall apart on you. It doesn't matter if it gets wet, that sort of thing. So, okay. One other thing that I've heard people talk about, which I have not personally done, but um, there is a UV spray that you can buy that supposedly will help the life of your doormat. Um, I went without it because I wanted to see if that's necessary, but uh, I've heard people talk about it for doormats or garden flags, that sort of thing where it's going to be in the elements. So, you know, that may be something you wanna look into if you're worried about protecting your doormat. Um, but these are just seriously too cute not to do. And for 13 bucks, um, and, and then all you need are your sublimation prints, that's a really, really awesome deal. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to show you how I printed this. So let's jump over to Silhouette Studio. So this, um, let me show you, I cheated. This picture I stole from the, um, off, uh, not Office Depot, the Home Depot website. But you can see that my do design is a little too big for my sheet. So what I did was I went ahead and mirrored it, flipped horizontally, and then I slid this over, and then I just took off the two parts that were outside of the print range. So what I did was I printed this part first on one sheet, and then I came back and printed this part on a second sheet. So that's where that came from. So just to show you that, um, now I do print on an Epson, which is a 13 by 19 uh, maximum. And um, you know, these are these doormats are just a tad too big to do like a full color, um, you know, from edge to edge. But with just a few modifications, you can kind of get around that. And I have done these in color. So I, I will, I'll show you some of those whenever we get finished. But, okay, I'm back. What I also wanted to show you, and um, if you've ever subscribed to our sublimation box, you will know that we included some of these in the last quarterly box, okay? They're really cool and they're really exciting because what they do is they're markers and they give you the flexibility, see all of our pretty colors, okay? The flexibility to 
use your artistic talents. Now, I want to say this, I don't have a whole lot of artistic talent, but if I did, um, this would be even cooler. But what I like to do, uh, my daughter loves to color and she makes some really cool projects. So I can print out, you can do it two ways. I can print out an image in regular ink. Okay, and let her color it. And what that is going to do is whenever I sublimate it onto something, anything, a t-shirt, a keychain, when I sublimate it on there, that means that the black outline will not sublimate. Okay, so certain instances like this where I do still want the outline, I make sure that I print my outline in sublimation ink so that the black outline, I'm not gonna lie, things typically look better unless you're just really, really artistic. Things look better with the outline. So just, I'm just throwing that out there. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I have a couple of these pieces. Um, the, these are the two that I had to print separately. And then this is my main design, okay? And I'm gonna step back here so that you guys can see me. Now these, one of the bad parts is, um, you know, with any sublimation, you do have to um, do it mirrored, right? And so that means if you were going to try to draw something or write something, you need to make sure that you're doing it backwards, that you're doing it mirrored. Because once you draw or write, that's the part that's going to sublimate. So just keep that in mind. So let me see, purple, green. maybe a little bit of yellow, purple, green, and yellow. Boom, okay. So it is literally just as easy as it seems. And I'm not going to go too crazy. I wanna have um, like accents. So all I'm doing, so that you can kind of see, is I'm just drawing a little bit on here. And you can go, you know, as much or as little as you like. That part is completely up to you. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. You notice I didn't fill in any of mine because the reason I'm doing that is that my um, doormat is supposed to be like uh, understated. Now I could have very well colored in those solid colors and been just fine. So I've got one down and I've got one more green. So I did that one a little bit different. Can you see it on there? Okay. Now these markers, just like sublimation ink, they are going to look um, dull compared to what you would normally expect. That's okay because they come to life once you press them. So I'm gonna address this one up just a little bit more because I want it to be very pretty. Uh, this doormat is going to be a gift, so I don't want them to look at it and be like, eh, you could have done better. Okay. So, there we go. Just a little dress up. Now, I'm going to take my, maybe this isn't a flower, but I thought it was a flower. So there we go. The more I look at it, maybe those are leaves, but it's gonna be a flower today. So let me move. All right, so my vision for this is I'm going to do, um, 
purple at the base. I am also not um, a gardener of any type. Like I have no idea if this uh, is even a reasonable expectation for a flower. You would think living in the South, like I guess right now is the perfect time to be planting gardens and that sort of thing. I don't, Peggy is allergic to the outdoors. I don't really do a whole lot of that. Okay, so there's my purple, right? And I'm gonna go back in and on the edges, I'm gonna do some yellow. And I'm actually going heavier on the yellow because we are not sublimating on white. So what that means is that my yellow is not going to show up very well on the gray. I could have picked a different color, but I didn't. So there we go. All right, so like I said, remember this is supposed to be understated. So I did not color these in solid. And then what I wanna show you about um, lining all of this up, I use this Krylon Easy Tack and uh, my friend Jamie introduced me to this because I was using the expensive stuff. And this, I actually scored uh, when AC Moore was going out of business. I got like two or three cans of this at 40% off. So pretty excited and it works really well. So we're going to give it a little shake. And I spray this on my design, not on my blank. All right. But what I want to show you is I'm going to go ahead and spray... Okay. And I went a little heavier than normal because now I can go ahead and position these pieces that I cut off and that tacky spray will hold them on here. So there we go. Can you guys see that? All right. So I'm just going to spray those two. I don't want to go super heavy on it. That's not necessary. And then also, also, let me pause before I put this down. Before I printed this, I made sure that I centered my design from the bottom of EST to the home. So try to do that when you can, and it gives you a little bit more um, of an idea when you're going to center it. But if you notice, can you see through that? Yeah. See, I can actually see my design through my paper. So whenever I go to line it up, I can get a better idea of where it's going to go. And I changed my mind about this guy. I actually want this guy to kind of come in on the edge here. All right. Okay. So, well, I don't want to pick it up and let it bend because I'll get wrinkles, okay? But for the most part, that is stuck like chuck, right? So, I'm gonna line this up in my heat press, in my heat press, okay? And I just wanna make sure that my design is fully covered and with this big top plate and it is. But part of what I wanted to show you is that if I only had a 15 by 15 heat press, and I demonstrated this in our Silhouette Love Sublimation class that I did up in St. Louis with Craft Chameleon, and what you can do is you can find, um, think of like a piece of cardstock, or if you're going to do a lot of these, you can have a thin piece of board cut. Make sure that your pressure is turned all the way up because the board 
is going to um, give you more thickness that you have to combine with your mat. But what you would do is you could slide this over, press it, because your design is held in place, then you would just slide it back over and press again. And um, the reason for doing that is you can press both sides on a smaller heat press. And as long as you have something underneath your doormat, then you don't have to worry about it um, drooping off the edge and getting your design misaligned. So don't feel bad if you don't have a big heat press because you can do this, or if you have an easy press, an easy press too, excuse me, not the regular easy press. And I'm going to do this at 400 degrees. And I believe it's going to be 120 seconds. So I probably should have checked that before the video, but I'm going to do 120 seconds. Also, a friend of mine, because you still have this border around the outside, she actually took patterns and filled that in. She did, uh, oh, she did buffalo plaid. That's what it was. So don't feel like you're limited to this area. You can really break outside the box and do that area too. And then you would just do the same thing because even my heat press isn't big enough to get all the way to the corners. So I would have to press that part in sections or use my easy press. So. All right, so I got my print, I got my mat. Cover it with my butcher paper, right? I got this from Amazon, but I hear you can buy it in bulk at like Sam's and stuff too. And you guys try not to laugh at me as I close this heat press because it's a little difficult for me. Whew, okay. So if I was a smarter person, I would probably get some tools out and loosen my pressure because I don't actually need that much pressure for this uh, doormat, but it's just that it's thicker than most of the items that I sublimate. So I try to leave my pressure alone because uh, sensitive things like acrylics, I need just the right amount of pressure for um, whereas this one, it can, it can handle having too much pressure and not have any problems. So I'm going to let this count down and let me just tell you about these markers. So I bought these markers online and you can probably get them from most of your sublimation uh, dealers and they ran... I wanna say it's like $35 for a set. And I think they're only available as a set. Um, so at first I was really a little leery because that I normally wouldn't spend $35 on markers. Although I know a lot of you that do that regularly for specialty markers, but I'm more of like a Crayola kind of coloring girl. Uh, but I just wanna say that in the time that I've been using these markers, I have really, really come on board with just being able to use them in an artistic fashion. Like I said, I let my, do my daughter color with them all the time because she's such a fantastic um, color at seven years old. And then I can kind of, uh, you know, create that artwork for her if she wants to do canvases or tote bags or make gifts. You know, it kind of puts the ball in her court. She can color all these pictures that she wants, whether I print them or whether she freehands them. So um, they're just a really neat addition. So I do recommend them and they are the only markers that I've seen on the market that do this. Okay, so that's what they look like again. And it's 10 markers. Um, you even get black. So like we were talking about printing something with an outline, if you don't want something with a really strong outline, you can print it with that copy, uh, the regular ink so that it doesn't, um, the ink won't transfer. And then you can choose where your outlines go with this, okay? Um, another thing, when I was first introduced to these markers, because we talked about, let me check the time real quick. Okay, we're good. We talked about, um, What did we talk about? Oh, having to mirror your text. So the way that they taught us at the trade show was that you can write or print out whatever you want and then put a blank sheet of paper over that so that you can see, um, no, no, 
no, back up, turn it over so that it's mirrored and use your markers on the back of it. And that'll help you keep your things um, mirrored instead of having to, uh, you know, try to do it yourself. Now, surprisingly, I can actually write um, decent backwards, but not like super awesome, not enough to, to make a go of just freehanding these. So, you know, just something to keep in mind. Um, I paired these up with a keychain and we did a mandala design on it. So it was something that it didn't matter if it was reversed or not. So that was really cool. Um, and then, you know, I've, like I said, I keep talking about it, but um, I've even had other kids that have come to visit and I, you know, maybe their mom is trying to shop for some vinyl and I'm like, hey, why don't you go ahead and color a picture? You know, and it's just a, you know, when you have some inexpensive, inexpensive gift ideas like a acrylic cheek keychains and stuff like that, you know, it's real fun to, to kind of let the kids have at it. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and open this and we will get to see if I guess the right time or not. So, did I tell you it was 400 degrees? I did 400 degrees. And originally I said 120 seconds, but while we were talking about it, mentally I took that back and we are doing 240 seconds. So that will either be way too much or just right. So let's see, let's see how it turns out. Also, you're gonna see when I pop my heat press like that, that is another reason why you want to um, make sure that you have that adhesive to hold your design in place because it stops you from getting ghosting. Sometimes you'll pop that heat press and your design will shift just a little bit and you get this weird outline duplicate image. Okay. So see, good thing we had the butcher paper because you can definitely see where the design came from. Can you guys see while I do this? All right, ready? All right, all right. I am really excited how this turned out and I can't wait to show you my colors. And I think they came out perfect. All right, can you guys see it? You see where my green is and my yellow and my purple? So that way, the color wasn't super overwhelming like it would have been if I had printed that accent. Careful, it gets a little hot. <laughs> but if I had printed that accent straight on here, you know, you don't get the, the option to be able to control how you're coloring. So I just want to show you again. So now all I can do is hope that the recipients of this doormat love it as much as I do, right? So I'm gonna set this down and let it cool off. And don't go anywhere, I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna run to the front door and grab the, um, the other one I wanted to show you, okay? Don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. All right, is everybody still here? Try to make it as quick as I could. Are you ready? Now remember, I did this one in, it had to have been October, okay? So, it's a little dirty. I probably need to go hose it off, but I just wanted to show you color-wise, color-wise, the colors are still there. They have not faded. They and and my door is in direct sunlight. I don't have any type of you know like super awesome covering, so you know this is is direct sunlight. So I'm really really happy with how these hold up and how they turn out. So like I said, it's a little dirty. I'll show you again. Really good colors. Really really good colors. So Ugh, now I gotta wash my hands. Okay. So I'm going to check out your comments real quick or your questions and see if there's anything that needs to be answering, okay? Oh, I guess I can't do that. I thought I could do that, but I can't, but that's okay. So what I would do is if you have any questions or comments, 
like I always say, please, please, please ask because I will come through and I will answer like nobody's business. So I will confirm the time and the uh, for the doormats. Like I said, I did 240 and I'm very happy with how it turned out. And um, if you want, I'll post a link to the doormats. From what I understand, they're seasonal. So you cannot always find them all year. But I'll tell you this, they often sell out in stores. But they're pretty heavy. So I'm not sure cost-wise um, what the cost of shipping would be. But they come straight from the Home Depot. So I'll post the link to them and you can check them out and experiment with them and see what you think because it is definitely the season of uh, gift giving to your neighbors. So this is something cool you could do for the neighborhood or somebody who buys a new house or whatever the occasion may be, right? And of course, if you're in business, these are really big sellers. You sell these, so what did I say? It was like 13, I'm sure there's a little bit of tax with that. $13, a couple of dollars for your sublimation paper and your ink and these sell online and in most local areas. I won't say all, in most local areas for like $40. Someone, I think someone even said they sell theirs for 45 or 50. So, I mean, there's, in sublimation, there's definitely a lot of uh, profit markup that you can do. And just like I copied that design from the Home Depot website, you can do that too and create some mock-ups to show people, you know, what their design is gonna look like ahead of time and uh, what, you know, they can double check the spelling and you can advertise, lots of cool things you can do with those types of mock-ups. So, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up for now. So I can come back and answer you guys' questions. But as always, I really appreciate you joining me today. And I, did I even introduce myself? I don't think I did. If this is the first time catching me, my name is Becky Dykes, Silhouette Life Inspiration Box. And I am always on Craft Along TV from uh, 4 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So those are my two times. So be sure to set a reminder. And we will do this again on Thursday. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.